In this section we will work on the entrance tower and its roof and on the materials and cutting guide uh, the entrance tower is listed here and then here are all the pieces for both the tower and the roof and I've got them all laid out here and labeled. It's impo especially important to make sure that the tower roof back and front are labeled. They're very similar but they're not identical. And then on our templates for the entrance tower front um, we need this page is entrance light openings and we'll come later and work on the entrance back. The, there's a separate piece that forms the entrance that stands in front of the entrance tower. So we need this piece, um, but you only need it if you're going to do lights. So um, this opening is only for lights. And then we need a couple of pieces of decorative paper, one for the walls of the tower and one for the roof of the tower. And these are the pieces that I've chosen for that. So that, and we also need one little 3 8 inch magnet, a low profile magnet. So those are the parts and pieces that we need. So let's get started with the entrance tower. So we'll start by doing our chipboard prep and the only piece that we have to uh, work on is the front wall and so here's my template over here. So I'm going to just draw some lines here to cut out this shape. So measure in three quarters of an inch from either side. and then three and one eighth inch up from the bottom and I'll just use my gridded mat here to get that on and then up from there we have two and seven eighths so that would be up to this point I'm just going to make some tick marks there and then we want to come up an additional half inch from there and that will be the top top little piece right here. Now if we measure in on uh, I'm going to just draw that that top line here all the way across so that I can measure in an inch and a quarter from each side and make a tick mark there uh, so we'll be able to connect the dots and make those cuts. So inch and a quarter over here and then this center will end up being an inch and an eighth. So I'll just connect those little tick marks that I just made there and now I've drawn this shape over on this piece here. So I'll go ahead and get that cut out and then I'll be back. So here's our entrance tower front with this shape cut out. I forgot there's one more thing we want to do on this entrance tower front and that's to install the little 3 8 of an inch magnet. So I'm just going to put a center line uh, through here and I'm just going to use my gridded mat here to get that center in the center of the opening there and just draw a little line up here at the top and then this magnet gets centered on that line and the bottom edge of the magnet is an eighth of an inch uh, above the opening here so just uh, if I have self-adhesive ma magnets if you don't just use some uh, glossy accents to install that magnet there. And there's the magnet installed on the entrance tower front.
So now we have a little decorative paper prep and we're going to cover our two sides and our front with this piece of paper and everything gets cut uh, exactly to the size of the chipboard so you can use your materials and cutting guide and there should be just enough uh, paper on this 8x8 eight eight piece to cut out those four pieces. I'm sorry, three pieces. So I'll be back when I've done that. So here are my pieces that have been inked and I also prepped them with score tape. And on the left and right sides here, I put around the edges and then on the bottom I have half inch. And then here I put another piece of half inch and if we measure up from the bottom, the top of that piece is at four and one half on each one of these. And that's because there's another, uh, there's a porch that's coming in on both sides. And then I put a strip down the center just so that um, there will be windows here. That they just don't have openings for lights. So that'll help support those. And then on the back of this piece. I've got some pretty good score tape coverage because the entrance piece gets attached uh, to the front of the tower and we want this paper to be well adhered to that front piece. So that's the decorative paper prep. So inside of the front tower uh, there's a little platform that comes across so the the tea light that lights up the entrance won't have a place to fall back inside and get lost inside of the tower. So we need to mark for the placement of that little platform. And that goes, we need to mark our two sides and our back and we'll mark them all on the inside and we'll put a line up at four and one quarter inches. So just mark a line on all three of these pieces that comes up from the bottom four and one quarter inches. And now that we have our lines marked we can go ahead and join these four pieces. We'll just use butt joints and our cardstock joining strips and put all four in a row and then add one extra strip on the end here but don't make it, um, don't join it to make it three-dimensional quite yet. Now I have my four pieces joined here and I need to add some of the ledger strips. We'll add them to both the top and the bottom on all four pieces, keeping them a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. And then also where we drew this line, and I've got the bottom oriented over here to my left. I want to add a ledger strip on each of those lines. Now on the back it can span the whole distance here and the uh, top of the ledger strips strip aligns with that line. And then I've cut two pieces at an inch and a quarter because our platform is only an inch and I think it's an inch and a half. Yes, an inch and a half. So we don't want these to go the entire distance. So I'll just, this is my uh, back piece here. And so I'm just going to run them kind of leaving an opening at the opposite ends here. So these little pieces here on the sides again are only an inch and a quarter long and they're closer to the back side. And now I've just cut some other ones that I'll put in here uh, like we've done before leaving a sixteenth of an inch gap here at the top and again I'll do the same thing down here on the bottom. So I have all of my ledger strips attached now and so I can make it uh, 3D. On this side I kept them back from the edge here a little bit so that my uh, joining strip has a uh, good contact here. So I'll make this 3D. 
and make sure you reach in and give that a good burnish and then we can put in our base and we'll just run a bead of glue along those ledger strips and give it a little squeeze so it stays nice and rectangular and then once our base is set up a little bit we can run a bead of glue on these inside ones that are for the platform and put that in and then once we have that platform in there we can go ahead and run a bead of glue along this top edge and put in the tower top again hold that with some pressure or you could put a rubber band around it um, so that everything stays nice and tight and rectangular here on the top as well so there's our construction of our unit now we can add some finishing strips to these front two corners and then we'll add some joining strips to the back edges here and when we do that we will align them with the edge of the side piece here so they'll actually sit in front of the actual back here by about a sixteenth of an inch so just align them right on the edge here and make them go the entire length so I'll get that accomplished so now I have these joining strips on those back edges and the finishing edges on finishing strips on the front edges and I can go ahead and add my decorative paper just on the front at this point and I've, of course remember we've prepped it with score tape I'll also put a little ring of glue right around the edge of the magnet I just think that helps reinforce you know and keep that magnet in place there so I'll go ahead and get this front piece of decorative paper installed and then we need to do one more uh, last prep step on the tower and that's on the back to take uh, one of our ledger strips I've cut this about three and a quarter inches and I'm just going to center it on the top back here uh, holding it down a sixteenth of an inch and get that installed right there so three and a quarter inch piece centered here a sixteenth of an inch down from the top of the back piece there so now we're ready to attach the entrance tower to our house unit and it goes here on the front where we left this diagonal space it's going to fit right up inside of here and we'll use this joining strip on the bottom here and then we'll bring in the unit and it fits right in this space here and we'll use the joining strips to attach it but let me zoom in a little so we can uh, take a closer look at how that's going to fit together so I'm using the 45 degree line on my mat so that I can make sure this this unit sits in here at 45 degrees and that will help us make sure we keep everything square and plumb and then this is my uh, main base front piece the part we cut the hole in I'm not going to glue it in yet but I'm just going to feed the light through it and just so you can see what what should end up happening here that sits in on the ledger strips and it will also rest on this ledger strip that's right here and when you get it all together there should be just like a little square that's open on 
each end down here. Hopefully you can see that. And so what I would what I'm going to do is I'll first attach this uh, the base joining strip down here and get that attached to make sure this this piece gets just centered down there and flat on the bottom and then again I'm not gluing in this top piece yet but I'll keep it there so that I know exactly where this should fit at the top now use your uh, grid lines on your mat to keep everything uh, square and then if you have one of these little levels that's handy to make sure things are staying nice and plumb as you work so I'll attach that base strip down here first so what I've done is taken a, just a piece of blue tape the low tack tape here and gotten this aligned centered here and flush on the bottom so that I know that that's in a good spot and then I can turn it up this way and reach in there and uh, attach that base joining strip. So I've attached that base joining strip and now I'm just going to double check that my lights are functioning here and they are. So I'll feed my light control through my top piece and I'll go ahead and run glue along all of my ledger strips here and then attach that front piece. I still have not attached the two side joining strips. Now I'm checking as I'm gluing this in. I'm using the, the lines down here on my a gridded mat to make sure this unit is staying square and I have the tower at on the 45 degree lat line I know you can't see it down here but it's on the 45 degree line down here and I have this the unit equidistant here so that I have my two little squares of open space at each end and I'm making sure that it's staying right up tight next to each of the edges of my walls here and I'm gonna let that set up here for a, a second and once this top piece has set up I've uh, kind of checked for plumb with my little level here in several places everything looks good and now I can release the score tape backing on my two side joining strips here and put them in place and what I like to do when I'm doing this is I keep the structure in place on my gridded mat and then once I get one installed I'll just move the whole mat around to get to the other one that way I'm not disturbing anything and the positioning that I have here while I'm getting those strips installed. And make sure you've given everything a good burnish and then I'm again going to just put a little piece of blue tape over this hole here so that the controls can't accidentally fall down inside of there. Now we can attach uh, our remaining decorative paper that we had reserved. Here's our wall eye and we'll just get our window openings aligned here and put that on and then here's my left wall for the entrance tower so I'll get those two pieces installed. Make sure you um, support the, if you're working like me on this edge put some support behind here because you know there's this gap and so you can't just press down on here so I'll install these two pieces so here's the decorative paper on these two sides now we can turn it over and put the paper on this wall and on this long wall H up here as well. 
So here's the decorative paper on these last two sides. And then we need to mark a light line at four and a half inch up on both these two pieces that we just put in and on the other side on here and here. Four and a half inches up from the bottom of the construction. That'll be our placement line for the upper level porches. So now we have our structure with the front on. And the back side on. For the roof, for the entrance tower, we have to do a little prep work on our chipboard. And we'll start here with the roof front and back. And on both of these pieces, on the top edge, we'll measure in 5 eighths of an inch from each side. So 5 eighths of an inch from each side. And then We'll connect that mark that we just made with the bottom corners so that we create a trapezoid here um, with a slanted side on each side. And the roof back, same thing, measure in 5 eighths of an inch from each side on the top, connect that to the bottom corner. So I'll get that accomplished. And then for our roof sides, we want to measure in an inch and a half and on one piece we'll measure in an inch and a half from the left and on the other piece we'll measure in an inch and a half from the right and we'll connect those dots with that corner so that we end up with uh, two pieces that have a square, one square side and one slanted side. So I'll get that accomplished. So here are my two side pieces and obviously you could have cut them both the same because you know they are they can be just flipped like this while they're chipboard. But the reason I did it this way was it helps me to remember when I get to the decorative paper that I have to cut two mirror images. So um, that's the reason that I chose to do it that way. So that's our chipboard prep. Now the decorative paper that I'm using has a, has a is directional so I need to make sure I keep all of my pieces oriented the same way and for the back and the front we'll cut these exactly the same in fact for all pieces we'll cut the shapes exactly to edge to edge to begin with and so I'll do that and then I'll come back and talk about some special cutting that we need to do So I have my front and back and my two sides done and I used a scrap that I had left over from another piece just to cut a piece for the top that's exactly the same size as the top. So the top, the front and the back stay how they are. Now on the two uh, side pieces I want to have about a sixteenth of an inch reveal around each side so I'm going to trim a sixteenth of an inch off of each side. Now if you don't care about reveals you don't need to do that and um, I'm always going to start with the top so that I remember and work my way around so that I remember which sides I've cut off uh, my sixteenth of an inch. So I'll do that for both of these two pieces. I trimmed off my sixteenth of an inch around my two side pieces and I inked all of my pieces and then I've prepped them on the back with 
score tape on the front and back I added a couple of extra pieces just because there that was a lot of real estate and so that's the decorative paper all prepped and ready to go so now we're ready to put our unit together here and we have the front and the base and the back and the top and we can just go ahead and put these together with butt joints and then go ahead and make it into a 3D unit so just butt one edge up against the other and when you get to the top here attach it to the back Now this unit is square on its back edge so if you put your back edge on the gridded mat it should be square to the bottom edge. The top edge should be perpendicular to the bottom edge and only the front edge is slanting. So that's how we're going to put this together. And the way we do that is we'll run a bead of glue around all of these edges and then this piece should fit right on top there. And you'll want to make sure that this stays square here. So use your mat or something. The edge of this piece obviously is square here. So you can use that to make sure that your sides stay square. So just add a bead of glue on all of these edges and this will overlap all of those edges check that one side is uh, square and dry before you add the other side. When you're putting this piece together I like to put it together like with the uh, base sitting uh, so it's sitting upright and you may find that the sides are a little bit longer than the, um, the unit and just make sure that they are flush with the bottom here and then when it's thoroughly dry you can just take a pair of scissors and come right along that edge and trim off any excess and it's a relatively easy thing to do so you should get a nice um, flat surface coming along here so trim if necessary and then allow this to thoroughly dry And I again used my little level to make sure that my piece was staying nice and square and plumb. And once your unit is thoroughly dry, we'll use some of our finishing strips to finish each of these edges off. Just make sure you make nice corners where you come to a corner you can miter it so you don't have too much thickness if you want to but uh, make sure you have nice uh, finished edges all all along so here's my entrance roof unit with the finishing strips on all the edges and now I'm ready to attach my decorative paper now if you had to trim the chipboard sides at all you want to check and make sure that if you, you may need to trim the length of the decorative paper as well so double check that and then the front piece when you go to put these on the front piece is longer a little bit longer than the back piece so make sure you put the front piece on the front and just remove the score tape backing and put all the decorative paper in place. So here's the entrance tower roof with all of the decorative paper installed and I made sure to give it a good burnish and we will not attach this yet to the entrance tower so just set it aside for now. Now we can add windows and doors to the structure that we have built so far. 
and I started out by just laying down a hand towel here to give some cushioning to the structure as we're working on it because we're going to be um, lying it on its side and then once we get some windows on the side we just want to give some protection to those so this towel will help do that now most of the time we'll center our windows um, going horizontally or we'll place them exactly over the openings if there's openings behind them but in the case of the side windows to the entrance tower here we need to hold them a little bit further towards the back and that was the reason for making this template here with a half an inch and so I'm just lining that up right along the edge of the decorative paper here and that is going to give me a place to put a single window in and I'm using one of the ones that has uh, cardstock on the back so we'll just put that in right there make sure when you put the window in that the uh, wider part of the frame is towards the bottom and then we can remove this template and now I'll put my 7 inch template in again lining that up at the bottom and on the edge of the paper and I'll take another one of my windows with the cardstock on the back and attach it into that notch up there now for these windows on the entrance tower you can reach your hand in like this and put some support behind there to give those a good burnish so now I'll flip to the right side of the tower entrance tower and again I want to hold the windows back a half an inch from the back so I've flipped my template over so that I'm still coming to the back and I'll make sure I have this aligned with the paper and then I'll put a window in here and then use my 7 inch template to put the ups upper window in as well now we'll move over to our long tall wall here and this wall gets a door at the bottom and a door at the second level and then one of the the inch and one quarter window that has the uh, cardstock backing goes up here at the on the last part so to to get the first door centered properly or aligned properly I'll put my little 13 16 inch template and I'll put that door right on there and then I'm just using the pattern on my um, paper because I cut it symmetrical to keep everything in line or you can measure to make sure that you get the door centered and the doors of course have um, score tape on the back so we can just go ahead and I'll get that first one installed down here now for our second floor door you may recall that we drew a line four and a half inches up from the bottom when we put this paper on to begin with so we'll just use that guideline to align the bottom of the door that goes on the second floor and then to get the placement for the last top window up there I'm aligning my 10 and 11 16 inch template here and I'll just get it placed the window placed left to right so that it matches with the doors below turning our building over this is wall F here and wall F is similar we just have two doors that are going in here so we will put the first door on using our little spacer here the second door will be aligned with our four and a half inch line here and then we'll just center them left to right 
when we go to add windows that go on top of openings the frames are an eighth of an inch bigger all around so I've put my templates in here so that the this width over here to the right of the window is an eighth of an inch and these have all been sized to allow for that eighth of an inch there and remember that these windows we left some openings here in our score tape so we can put a drop of glossy accents in each of those locations to help that window stay secure because sometimes the the tape on the plastic isn't um, as great so we'll go ahead and do that and then I'll allow these to set up for a while before I move the box again um, to so that I don't disturb these while they're drying and I should say that on this um, part D we're using the inch and a quarter windows go here now here on wall C we're using one inch wide windows and I've again put my template to allow for that eighth inch uh, border of the frame and I'll go ahead and get these two windows installed now I've turned the building again and I'm looking at wall J here and we'll use one inch windows and again I've positioned my a template here to allow for that 1 8 inch overlap of the frames. Now I've turned the building again and I'm ready to put the French doors here on piece I. I'm using my 13 16 spacer for the bottom of the doors but I put this other spacer in just to help me find that 8 inch mark um, to get the uh, door centered properly. Now for our second floor door, we'll again use the four and a half inch line as the bottom placement of the door. And I've put my seven inch template in here just again to help me gauge that eighth of an inch uh, overlap of the frame there. So there are the French doors installed. And now we have all of our windows and doors on the project so far.